Hi, welcome. This is Clemens the Elector. In this video, we will talk about the operational amplifier. Now, even though the operational amplifier or op amp is not a discrete component like a resistor or a capacitor, its behavior is described by a few simple rules uh, that are as easy to understand as those of discrete parts. The ideal operational amplifier or op amp is a three terminal device. It has two inputs and one output. One of the inputs is non inverting, labeled plus, and the other is inverting and labeled minus. The inputs of the ideal op amp have infinite impedance, meaning that no current can flow into them. All the op amp does is amplify the voltage difference uh, present on its uh, inputs, like this. When the op amp is ideal, then the amplification or gain A is infinite. In real life, A is not infinite, of course, but very large, as so large that in many circuits it can be considered infinite. Dividing by A gives this. And since A is much, much larger than V out, this can be simplified to this. In other words, V plus equals V minus. This is a strange result, as V plus and V minus are inputs over which the op amp has no control. Yet keep this uh, equation in mind, as you will see in a few minutes how to make use of this. For now, let's go back to our first equation. If A is so big, then you might wonder how an op amp can be useful, as its output will be either plus or minus infinity, depending on if V minus is lower or higher than V plus. The output can't be infinity, of course. Infinity is limited by the power supply. So plus infinity is the positive supply voltage and minus infinity is the negative supply voltage. We will assume a symmetric supply of say plus and minus 12 volts. The first application that comes to mind is to use the op amp as a voltage comparator, which is indeed a very common application. Due to the op amp's super large gain, the output voltage will be 12 volts when V plus is higher than V minus and it will be minus 12 volts when V plus is lower than V minus. In the special case that V plus and V minus are identical, the output will be zero. And this is the key to understanding op amp circuits. To make an op amp useful, its input signals must be such that the op amp output remains close to zero. Not zero all the time, because that is about as useful as plus or minus infinity, but the output should be able to move around zero without bumping into the limits set by its supply voltage. You can try yourself to keep the input signals so close to each other that the op amp output will always stay within its boundaries, but it is much easier to let the op amp do it all by itself by applying negative feedback. Negative feedback means feeding part of the output back to the input in such a way that it makes the output move in the opposite direction. It is like punishing unwanted behavior in the hope that it turns into desired behavior. Positive feedback, on the other hand, is giving your dog a cookie every time it does what you tell it to do. This can easily get out of control when your dog will roll over all the time in the hope of getting more cookies. Applying negative feedback to an op amp is easy. Simply make the output control its inverting input. When you apply a constant voltage to the non-inverting input and a lower voltage to the inverting input, the output will be positive. Feeding part of the output back to the inverting input will make the voltage difference between the inputs smaller and so the output voltage will move to zero. If, on the other hand, the inverting input is higher than the non-inverting input, then the output will be negative. As before, feeding part of the output signal back to the inverting input will decrease the voltage difference between the two inputs and the output will again move to zero. The goal of negative feedback in an op amp circuit is to make the voltage difference between the two inputs disappear. Because of this, when analyzing an op amp circuit, you can start by assuming that the voltages on the two inputs are identical and work your way up from there. And that is exactly what the first equation showed. The most basic form of negative feedback is the inverting amplifier. It requires two resistors, R1 and R2. To keep things simple, we connect the non-inverting input to zero volts. As I just said, negative feedback ensures that the two inputs will see the same voltages. This is the reason why R1 is in the circuit. Without it, the inverting input may be driven too hard, make it impossible for the op amp to drive it to the same voltage as the non-inverting input, which is at zero volts. R2 ensures that only part of the output is fed back. 
If the feedback is too strong, the circuit can become unstable and start to oscillate or become too nervous to control. To write V out as a function of V in, we must apply Kirchhoff's first circuit law. The sum of the currents flowing into a node must be equal to the sum of the currents flowing out of that node. Remember that the op amp inputs have infinite impedance, therefore current can only flow through R1 and R2. This gives us the following equation. But, as we just learned that thanks to negative feedback the voltage on the inverting input is the same as on the non-inverting input, it is also zero volts and we can simplify the equation. Rearranging we obtain this. This shows that we have indeed an inverting amplifier of which the gain is R2 divided by R1. A non-inverting amplifier with negative feedback can be made too. V in is now connected to the non-inverting input. Again, using Kirchhoff we can write the equation. Substituting V minus by V in, which is the same as V plus, we get this. Rearranging this gives this. This shows that we have indeed a non-inverting amplifier of which the gain is 1 plus R2 over R1. R1 and R2 do not have to be resistors. They can be complicated frequency dependent impedances named Z1 and Z2 or even nonlinear circuits. It doesn't really matter as the basic behavior in a negative feedback configuration remains the same, namely that the output of the op amp will always try to make the voltages on its two inputs the same. In real life uh, with non-ideal op amps uh, things are, of course, a bit more complicated due to manufacturing tolerances, uh, parasitic impedances and other physical limitations. But the operating principles uh, do not change. Now that you know this, uh, you can try to analyze and understand more complicated op amp circuits. One question remains though, why is it called an operational amplifier? The answer is found in an article from 1947. Because an amplifier is so connected, meaning using negative feedback, can perform mathematical operations of arithmetic and calculus on the voltages applied to its input, it is hereafter termed an operational amplifier. Ok, that's it for now. See you next time when we will have a look at some other electronics related subject that I do not know in advance.